We're just going to do a walk through a couple of nightclubs, just letting you know there's about 40, 50 people in the laneway as well, so just letting you know that also. Ambulance have been called and uh, right. should be on route shortly, Cool, 781, we can assist us. 781, uh, yeah, Roger, no, thanks for that. It's uh, just west of Flinders um, Lane and Elizabeth, so. I'll try and get some other uh, other units there to you as well. Uh, 305. Melbourne North 305, go ahead. Yeah, North 305, we're clearing the last, uh, could you mark us code 2 and shortly off? Peter's E port 458. Flinders North 305. Melbourne North 305, go ahead. It was very obvious from the start that this piece of legislation was going to support the regeneration of policing as being focused on the community rather than us and them mentality. We felt that introducing a charter would send a clear message to the community about society's expectations of how they should treat one another. Australians have a very strong ethos around people deserve a fair go, and the concept of a fair go all around is a key part of our culture. Uh, and so talking about human rights in an Australian context is very much about giving people a fair go. It's about the balance, the balance of the needs of the offender, perpetrator, whichever language you like to use, and the balance of the needs of the community. But first and foremost, it was really about highlighting what has long been a part of our tradition and culture, which is around affording people dignity and respect and protecting people's rights. One of the challenges we faced was breaking down some of the perceptions that police might not be absolutely focused on human rights. Now, that might be because sometimes police have got it wrong. Yeah, it's been that Lane and Elizabeth, just uh, west of Elizabeth. We've got a, a drunk here that needs assistance. The first tip really was about firing up people's radar, if you like, so that they actually started looking for those issues in the workplace. High complaints against police, some service delivery problems with really, really bad timelines on completing stuff, from victims reporting to getting offenders to court in time. Um, we're having court costs issues with um, prosecutions that were failing because of poor investigation. questions around quality of prisoners food, making sure that prisoners have access to sunlight, making sure that if we're dealing with suspects we're respecting their right to silence. The scope of the program is from day one it was accessible to all employees of Victoria Police from the admin worker who takes in the calls to the chief commissioner. Because if a receptionist is taking a call, they have to be thinking about the rise of the individual at the other end. Yeah, Wayne, if a scientist is managing an investigation, they have to be thinking about the integrity of the evidence because that is what is going to be protecting the community. Word got around that wherever somebody has done human rights education, there's less angst when they're dealing with the community. So we started to get flooded with requests. Human rights training is, uh, forms part of our foundation training program now. So uh, uh, recruits marching into the academy or, or going to the academy for, the, for their training phase uh, do uh, uh, initial education in human rights. We certainly have to be conscious of the diversity in our community. Some have faced a pretty tough time on their journey here, 
many years in a refugee camp. Some have come from countries where law enforcement officers are oppressors. It certainly creates some challenges when we, as Victoria Police, are looking to deliver services. Since we settled here as a new immigrant, a lot of our youth, they were having problems, how caused difficulties of understanding how things is working in these countries. Once there is issue, they don't know how to sort it, whether with law or by themselves. Uh, a simple complaint came in that the police were over-policing Sudanese kids. Our police force is predominantly white. However, we are not going to assume they're racist. We just have to make sure that they understand there's a difference between a person and their behavior. So. The person is the person who needs to be protected. If there's behavior that is deemed to be illegal, then we manage the behavior. And that comes from the accountability that is brought about by the human rights framework. Why am I doing this? Is it legal? Is it proportional? You know that we're probably about 50 meters uh, off Flinders Street. So we have very clear parameters. This is how we behave with the community. If you don't, you will be sanctioned. The policeman came down there and I'm like, oh, what did I do? Or is there any problem with the boys or what's happening? Then and it's like, oh, no, we just want to talk to you about something. There is a program we're running. It's about the youth, you know, youth leadership and all this sort of stuff. Then I'm like, OK, that sounds a bit interesting. We emphasize that human rights are about respect and dignity. And we emphasize that the only difference from culture to culture is how dignity and respect are articulated. If I was to uh, nominate one key thing that's changed, there is now a common language around this stuff. Uh, it is much easier now for uh, me and my supervisors and indeed um, police who are on the beat to um, self-regulate, uh, use a language that their colleagues or their subordinates understand when they're wanting to set expectations around how, peop how people should behave and how they should do what is a very difficult job. It's given us a range of dividends. It hasn't actually been a chore. It's, it's actually been a bit positive to allow us to do our job better. Over the past 12 months, right across operational policing, there's been on average a 30% reduction in complaints uh, about police conduct. From that time, I started to know more about police. Here it's all about, you know, just the uniform. They put the uniform on. That's the difference between me and them. But once there is no uniform, you know, it's just a normal person like you and me.